1943. All right, here we go. Max Olson, theathletic.com, joins us. Sick of 365 Radio. It's been yet another eventful week in college football with the second week of the standings, coaching changes, Texas Tech with Joey McGuire, uh, Billy Napier. I, I noticed a story on the athletic.com about a rising star, and maybe he's on LSU's radar. Max, thanks for your time. Uh, what has been, in your opinion, this busy week, the, the biggest story so far this week? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, at least in our neck of the woods, probably Joey McGuire and, and, and Texas Tech wrapping up that search in, in just two weeks and um, hiring uh, a guy that uh, certainly we can all get behind here at Texas Tech. I mean, it's uh, I've known Joey for a long time, going back to the Cedar Hill days, and uh, was was really happy for him. Um, and, you know, a lot of times guys like him, uh, you know, th- there is just a certain ladder when it comes to uh, you know, these head jobs at the college level. And, and, you know, a lot of people kind of assume a guy like Joe McGuire, you know, needs to go put in two, three, four years at, um, you know, one of these jobs that, that might open like North Texas or Texas state or whatever, and um, try and win there. And then maybe a school like Texas tech will look at you. I'm, I'm glad that Kirby Hoka uh, and their search committee um, gave him an interview and, and, and took him seriously. And, and honestly, based on the press, press conference, you can imagine how the job interview probably went. So, um, you know, really cool to see that happen. And, uh, you know, I think that makes things in this conference a lot more fun. Max, taking uh, – t- let's let's all pretend for a second like we don't all like Joey McGuire a lot and, and respect him immensely. What do you think of him leaving midseason – or not midseason, but, you know, practically midseason. There's a month to go, uh, you know, and leaving a team in the conference and going and joining another, and they're going to play here in a couple of weeks. And, I mean, just that entire situation, I saw Lincoln Riley get asked about it, and he just laughed because he like it was comical to him, just the the thought of a guy leaving his staff and going and coaching at, let's say, you know, TCU, and they play each other in two weeks. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's going to be something that we see that's very common. Um, I, I think I, I definitely understand the, the pros for Texas Tech in terms of getting a head start here uh, with several weeks left in November in terms of building a staff or at least getting commitments from people to join your staff and, and getting commitments through your recruiting class and all that. I, I think it is it is taking this approach, being, being this aggressive like Texas Tech was, I think it is limiting in terms of who you can hire. I mean, I think, honestly, if, if Texas Tech had decided that Alex Grinch was their guy, he probably has to say no, or at least say, you know, I can't do this until, you know, the Big 12 title game's over or whatever it is for them, right? So I think, and, and you can't hire a sitting head coach that way. Like you can hire, like you should, as we've seen uh, with, with, uh, you know, Georgia Southern and Utah, you can hire a guy who's out of coaching, but it really limits your, your you know, ability to hire a head coach or even a coordinator. Um, if you're trying to get this thing done in November. So for that reason, I don't think we'll see a lot of people kind of copy that, but uh, yeah, hiring, hiring someone when you haven't played them yet is, is certainly a unique part of this. Uh, can't fault Joey for doing it. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm sure Dave Miranda has, has, you know, can fill in that, that role very easily. But, um, yeah, I, I, it's something I wouldn't expect to see going forward because, like I said, I, I think that really makes for a much smaller pool of coaches you can even hire. Max, there's, you know, a, a numerous amount of coaches on the hot seat or guys have moved off. You know, Gary, we talked about Gary Patterson last week. You know, Deion Sanders might be a, a candidate for that job. Uh, Dan Mullen uh, fired assistants. Scott Frost fired assistants. Do you think that maybe some guys like, well, well Frost is safe, but Mullen might be safe because uh, there's too many uh, coaches in the water right now and Florida might not be able to get the kind of caliber coach they want, or is he getting hotter by the week? I'm sorry, did you say Deion Sanders is a candidate for TCU? Yeah. <laughs> if Zach Evans really? has a Seriously? If Zach Evans has Seriously, a say. guys? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think the Florida one is interesting um, because certainly during, during that loss to South Carolina, you're like, ooh, this, this is one of those that might change the calculation there a little bit. Uh, not surprised that they moved on from Todd Grantham. I think that's one of those things that – you, you have to do because it's just gotten so bad and, and, and the fans and their players even seems like had, had kind of turned on that situation. I, I don't know. You know, there's just not that many tough games left on Florida's schedule. So I think maybe Mullen can survive this, but certainly, um, you know, it's been a pretty horrible year for him. And, and, and I, I wouldn't be that shocked if they made a change, if there was somebody out there they wanted to hire. Um, and, and what a fall from grace that would be considering where they were a year ago. And, 
um, you know, as close as they came to beating Alabama and, and you know, playing in a New Year's Six Bowl and all that. Um, you know, I, I think that, yeah, making some of these, these you know, Frost is safe for now, um, you know, but, but between that and, and Washington, you've got some pretty interesting situations here where there's certainly coaches feeling a lot of pressure and trying to relieve some of that pressure by, uh, you know, putting the blame on, on coaches and firing them. Yeah, it, does it just kick the can down the road? Or do you feel like, obviously, Frost understood what he was facing. No question. He took less. His buyout's less. There's incentives involved. I honestly, and you and I both, Max, we like them, and we know how frustrating they've been for a decade. I kind of like it. It's, it's something different. Now, whether it works in 12 months, I don't know. But it, it says something about how much he wants to stay there, even if it's been a wreck for four years. Yeah, I mean, I think pretty smart on Trev Albert's part to, um, you know, kind of appreciate the situation and the leverage here and go to Scott Frost the same way that the Ward Manual did with Jim Harbaugh and say, look, we got to renegotiate this deal because, you know, we feel like you're not delivering on it and, and we got to change the terms of this because Scott Frost having a $20 million buyout is, is maybe the biggest reason why they didn't make a change. And so they were able to knock that down to, to $7.5 million if they fire him again the next year. And I think that's a, that's a really important uh, move that they made there. Now, you know, is this going to need to kick the can down the road? I mean, yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I think that's entirely possible. I, I'm not sure this is going to work um, for, for Nebraska. Um, it'll be interesting to see who they go for, go with for, for OC there. I've heard Jake Pete's name a lot for that, but, but who knows what direction that search goes in. And, you know, I just don't, you know, a lot of times people will give the coach an extra year because they feel like, you know what, we're, we're doing things the right way and we're really set up to have a lot of players back and be pretty good next year. That's not the case in Nebraska. I don't think they're going to be very good next year. They're going to have to take a ton of players out of the portal. you got to hire four new coaches. you probably have to take a quarterback out of the portal, too. Uh, I have no idea how good Nebraska is going to be. I'm not sure that, that you should expect more than six wins from them next year. So uh, it's entirely possible that, that they're making that change at the end of next year. But clearly they want to give the guy another chance, and, and they desperately want it to work with Scott Frost. Max got a handful of uh, top twenty-five matchups this weekend. Uh, one of those uh, gonna be happening less than a mile away from where we're sitting right now, McLean Stadium, Baylor and Oklahoma. Uh, Oklahoma obviously unbeaten. Uh, Baylor coming off that tough loss to TC. Your thoughts on that game tomorrow? Yeah, can't wait to see it. Uh, you know, one of these games that that um, really you know sets the tone here for the Big Twelve race, and um, I think there's probably a lot of people nationally that that are going to be watching that game very closely because. Um, clearly there's a lot of skepticism about Oklahoma and this is one of those games when they have to put it all together and really show up and, and play really well. And, um, because I, I think we've seen Baylor has played a bunch of these games so far this year and has played really well in them. They really have. So, um, you know, I, I know last week was disappointing against TCU. Um, but you know, I, I really think this is going to be one of the best big 12 games of the year. Cause I think, I think Baylor can match up with them pretty well. Um, certainly, you know, if they can get Caleb Williams to make some freshman mistakes, um, I think it's going to be a really close game and potentially a winnable game here. But, man, it, this is one of those games where Oklahoma has to has to impress. They really do. And, and you know, the playoff ranking stuff doesn't really matter. If they win the Big 12 they know, and, and win out, they know they're going to be in. But, man, this is, this is a really defining moment here for the Sooners to just prove how good they are. Max Olson, TheAthletic.com on Sikkim 365 Radio. Uh, again, every usually on fr uh, Thursdays at 4, joining us today on the eve of uh, – do you think Caleb Williams can win the Heisman Trophy? Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that's how I would vote. I mean, I have no idea how that's, that's looking. But, like, guys, we, we do a weekly Heisman drop poll among our staff on The Athletic every week, and I think we put that up on Tuesdays, and – it is hard, and you know, so we, we put in three names each week, and it is really hard to put to do that on a week to week, week basis right now. Mm -hmm. There's there's I, there's just truly not a guy that you have to say, man, that's the front runner, no debate, that's the winner. I think it's really really wide open here, uh, and that's exciting. I think it's going to be cool to see how this all finishes out. But um, you know, you can't really say as great as guys like Kenneth Walker or. Uh, Matt Corral or, or, you know, Jordan Davis or whoever else you want to put up there, as great as they've been, you know, over nine, 10 games here, uh, there's just not one guy I think we can all agree on has, has been the guy. So, you know, would voters have a problem with how few games Caleb Williams played? Yeah, probably. I'm sure there's some people that like sort of wouldn't vote for him out of principle, but 
uh, the opportunity is absolutely there to go put up monster numbers over November and, and get to New York. Max, uh, obviously don't have time to, to talk about every game. So of the three other top 25 games, just pick which one you know is of interest and, and you can riff on it if you want. But uh, NC State, Wake Forest, you got 16 versus 12. You got A&M Ole Miss, no. 11 versus 15. And then you got Purdue, Maybe. Ohio State, 19 versus 4. Which one of those entices <laughs> you the most? Um, I, I think that, uh, man, I think Ohio State Purdue is going to be pretty fun. As, as much as I, I think A&M Ole Miss is, is definitely a big deal and, and that's one game they're going to. And, man, I think the way you saw A&M's defense play last week, um, that chess match there of, of uh, Kiffin versus Elko, I think is going to be really terrific to watch. But, man, the, I, I, I had a feeling that Purdue was, was going to put up a fight against Michigan State. And, that that line was just a little bit too close. It told you that somebody thinks, you know, Vegas thinks that that one had a chance to be upset potential. And and man, Purdue was phenomenal last week. And, and I went to the game in, in Lincoln and watched Ohio State and, and came away. Just I just don't think they're that scary of a team this year. So I'm not saying Purdue will win this week, but I I do think Ohio State's going to lose one of these teams in November. They've got a really tough slate ahead, and uh, that one I think I'm probably most interested in watching just to see can they start to put it together. Do you sleep with your stop rate stats? What do you, what do you mean? <laughs> no, no, you yeah, know that yeah, defensive yeah. stop rate. I, there's you, there's I, a double question there. Do you yeah. sleep with your stop rate no, stats? No, I was just I was having fun with you. I, I love that. Like I just keep my laptop in my bed? Yeah, <laughs> like, just, like you know, I thought you would have a folder with all those. I love them because, I, I again, there's always these new stats to pop up, and I'm not saying that's a new one, but – I enjoy that because it'll kind of tell the story of some people. Obviously, Georgia a and up, up close. Clemson's still high. That's not been their problem. Nebraska's 20 or 22nd. That's not been their problem. I love that stat. I really do. Instead of just total I, I defense. Appreciate it. The, 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 I appreciate that. And in 2017, uh, I was an idiot. And on Sundays, I would do that all by hand. I would just go through every wow. box score and, and count, count every drive chart and stuff. And it took me my entire Sunday. So... Finally, we got around to actually paying for a, a stat service that lets you, you know, click a button and get all that in, in, in about half a second there. So that that is very helpful. Um, but yeah, no, we've been doing stop rate at the athletic, uh, yeah, since 2017, and I appreciate you mentioning that. There, there are only about a dozen people who who, who appreciate it. So I'm, I'm glad to hear you mentioned one. I'm one of them, but again, I'm, you know, on well, me. Thanks, Max. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll have plenty to talk <laughs> Thanks, about. Yeah. Max Olson, theAthletic.com today. With us on Sickland 365 Radio, 365 Sports. We'll come back. Grayson Grudhafer was talking about a transfer who could be on campus this weekend for Baylor as they host Oklahoma. They